We've seen that in output markets, consumer surplus is the area above the equilibrium price up to the demand curve, and producer surplus is the area below the equilibrium price down to the supply curve. And if we look at this picture, it looks like the area of consumer surplus is roughly equal to the area of producer surplus. But that's only because of the way that we've drawn demand and supply curves. Suppose, for instance, we had a relatively steep demand curve and a relatively shallow supply curve. We start at the initial equilibrium price and find consumer surplus by finding the area above that price up to the demand curve. So we'd get this large consumer surplus area in here. We'd find producer surplus by going below the equilibrium price down to the supply curve and we'd get this very small producer surplus area. So now we have consumer surplus much bigger than producer surplus. Or suppose that supply curve was relatively steep and the demand curve was relatively shallow. Consumer surplus is the area above the price up to the demand curve, so it'd be this relatively small area in here. Producer surplus is the area below the equilibrium price down to the supply curve, so that would be this relatively large area in here. So now producer surplus is larger than consumer surplus. So we can see that the relative size of consumer surplus to producer surplus depends on the relative slopes of demand and supply curves. And that takes us to an idea in economics called price elasticity. A price elasticity It's just a measure of how responsive people are to price changes. Suppose, for example, that we had a very steep demand curve. And we start at an initial price, and we read off the quantity that consumers demand. Now suppose that we increase that price by a lot. Even such a large increase in price would cause very little change in the quantity demanded by consumers. We would say that these consumers are relatively unresponsive to price changes. They don't change how much the demand of the good very much as a result of a change in price. Or in the economist's language, we would say that these consumers are relatively price inelastic. Or suppose that we had a steep supply curve. And we start with some initial price. We read off the quantity supplied by firms. And then we raise that price by a lot even such a large increase in price would have very little effect on the quantity that these firms supply to the market. We would say that these firms are relatively unresponsive to price changes. They are relatively price inelastic. If, on the other hand, the demand curve was relatively shallow, and we started at some initial price, and then we increase that price even by a little bit, we would see a large change in the quantity demanded by these consumers. So these are consumers that are relatively responsive to price changes, or, in our language, relatively price elastic. And finally, think of a supply curve that's relatively shallow, Start with some initial price and read off the quantity that firms supply. Then raise that price by just a little bit and we see a large adjustment in the quantity that's supplied by firms. So here we have firms that are relatively price responsive, relatively price elastic. So these two curves are examples of curves that are relatively price elastic whereas these steeper curves are curves that are relatively price inelastic.
So we can see how the relative distribution of consumer and producer surplus in the market depends on the relative price elasticities of demand and supply. But price elasticities also have consequences for how much prices and quantities change in markets as the world changes. Suppose, for example, we think of some initial market with some initial demand curve, a supply curve, and some original equilibrium. Now something changes that causes a shift in one of the curves. Suppose we think of a shift in the demand curve. Remember, when we talked about households and household demands, we said that if anything other than the price of that good changes, it might shift the demand curve. So for example, if the income of consumers increases, and if this is a normal good, then consumers would demand more of that good at any given price. So that whole demand curve would shift to the right or shift up. Or if we had more consumers entering the market, perhaps more consumers have found out about this good, and so they're flooding this market, well, that would mean that we're adding over more household demand curves and that would shift the market demand curve to the left. So we would see a left or an upward shift in the demand curve and that would take us to a new equilibrium. An equilibrium where the quantity has increased and the price has increased. If the price had stayed at the original price level, then firms on their unchanged supply curve would supply exactly what they supplied before, but now consumers on the new demand curve would demand more than that. So firms would realize that there are lots of consumers who can't get the goods that they want, so they'd be able to raise their prices, and that upward pressure on prices would take us to this new equilibrium. But how can we tell how big the price change and the quantity change will be in this market? Well, it depends on the price elasticity of one of those curves. Suppose that supply curve had been more price inelastic. So going through this original equilibrium, suppose that we had had a steep supply curve instead. Well, then we would have started at this equilibrium, but when the demand curve shifted, we'd get to this new intersection up here. So the price would have risen more and the quantity would not have increased by as much. So the more price inelastic the supply curve is, the greater the impact of a shift in demand will be on price, and the smaller the impact will be on quantity. Or suppose that we think of another case. We start with a, an original demand curve and supply curve and an original equilibrium. Now suppose something causes the supply curve to shift. Well, what might that be? Remember that supply curves for firms are made up of marginal costs. So suppose that there's a new technology that lowers the cost of producing, and so the marginal costs for all the firms fall. Then when we add up the supply curves, which are portions of those marginal cost curves, to come up with the market supply curve, we would get a lower curve. We'd get a curve that shifts down or to the right. Or suppose that more firms enter the market. As more firms enter, we sum across more firm supply curves, and that would cause that same shift down and to the right. So now we have a new equilibrium that emerges the new intersection of demand and supply. The price would be lower and the quantity would increase. If the price hadn't changed, then consumers would demand exactly what they demanded before, but now along the new supply curve, firms would want to supply more than that. So in order to be able to sell their goods, they have to lower the price and that downward pressure causes us to converge to this new equilibrium. But what determines how big these arrows are? How big is the price change relative to the quantity change in the market as a result of a shift in the supply curve? Well, again, it depends on the price elasticity of one of those curves. Suppose that the demand curve had been steeper 
Suppose instead of this original demand curve through the original equilibrium, we'd had a steep demand curve through that original equilibrium. Then the new intersection of demand and supply would have been here, not here. That would mean that the price would have fallen more and the quantity would have increased by less. So the more price inelastic the demand curve is, the more a shift in supply will cause prices to change and the less it'll change quantities. Now, of course, each of these curves in the market can shift left or right. We can get combinations of price changes where the price goes up and the quantity goes up, or the price goes down and the quantity goes up. Or we can get combinations where the price decreases and the quantity decreases, or the price increases and the quantity decreases. So when you get to the quiz, I may ask you questions where I give you a certain price quantity change in the market. And I ask you which curve must have shifted. So when you do that, you can practice just drawing supply and demand curves and shifting them and seeing which shift would cause the price quantity change that I'm asking you about. Or I might ask you, well, what would have to be the case for the price change to be bigger or the quantity change to be bigger? And that has to do with the price elasticities of one of the two curves. And of course, you can think about the relative size of consumer and producer surplus as price elasticities of demand and supply change.